Hello and welcome everyone. I'm Tom Boley, Chief Market Strategist at EarningsBeats.com and this is Trading Places Live. It's Monday, May 31st, 2021. Happy Memorial Day to all out there. I want to thank all of those who have served our country and continue to do so. Appreciate uh, all of that uh, in uh, preserving all of our freedoms here in the U.S. Uh, I am pre-recording this Trading Places Live for Tuesday, June 1st. Futures currently are in negative territory, but barely so, as we prepare to kick off another month, our final one of the second quarter. Uh, looking ahead to the agenda for today, I'm going to get into the daily market recap. Uh, talking technically, I want to look ahead a little bit, uh, take a look at what we might expect in June along those lines. We'll also get into June seasonality, uh, chart lists, earnings spotlight. And we'll wrap up with the three you must see. I'm going to talk a little bit about topping candlesticks there. So I got three examples of uh, stocks that uh, may have topped on Friday. So you'll want to stick around and take a look at that. Um, but before we get into any of that, let me take you over to earningsbeats.com. We are uh, kicking off our spring special. We do this once a year and uh, it's our best deal of the year. So if you are interested in checking out our service, this is a great time to do so. You can uh, uh, come on board. We have a 30-day uh, no-cost trial. So it does, uh, you, you get hit with $7 when you first sign up, but we do refund you the $7. So there's literally no cost for 30 days. And during the first 15 days, the spring special will be going. So uh, if at any point during the first 15 days, you like the service and you'd like to continue it and extend it, uh, this will be the best opportunity of the year to do so. Uh, you'll get the rest of your 30-day trial, and then you'll get 14 months. So we'll give you an annual package, but we'll throw in two bonus months for free. Uh, it is our best deal of the year, so we hope you take, uh, uh, take us up on that. Um, also, if you are new to Earnings Beats, I'd like to just let you know that you can sign in with uh, your name and email address and hit that subscribe button and we'll make sure we get you set up for our Earnings Beats Digest newsletter. It's published three times a week, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Typically, it's out just before the market opens, probably around 8.30 Eastern or so. Um, there's no credit card required. You can unsubscribe at any time. And most of the newsletter articles feature stocks um, in terms of maybe upcoming earnings reports or maybe past earnings reports, maybe their companies hitting key support levels, uh, could be stocks that we want to show based on their relative strength. Those are the things that really matter to us at Earnings Beat. So we'd love to have you check out that free newsletter. I think it'll help in your trading. And many of our newsletter articles also give you some option uh, uh, or some uh, uh, tradable uh, options in terms of uh, maybe buying or selling security. So Anyhow, we're not registered investment advisors. I do want to point that out. So uh, any positions you do take, uh, you're on your own. But uh, I do think a lot of our information is very educational. And I think you'll enjoy it. So uh, go to earningsbeats.com. Make sure you sign up for that free newsletter. All right, let's move on, talk a little bit about what happened on Friday. So here in the daily market recap, you can see that we did finish higher. Um, across the board, I think all but the small cap. You can see small cap, we finished down just a little bit, not much. Everything else was up fractionally. Um, we did reverse off of earlier highs, but really the last few days, there hasn't been a lot of volatility in the market. So uh, things have kind of uh, dried up in terms of volatility. I think the volatility index, the VIX, was down 17% last week. So the market slowly moving up and at the same time the fear uh, coming completely out of the market. But also what I found interesting, and I'll talk about this in just a couple of minutes as well, um, or talk about it now, you can look down here and see the three leading groups on Friday were all defensive areas. So while the fear is coming out of the market, it's not like the market is jumping into the more aggressive areas of the market and there's going to be even more on that coming up as I go into seasonality, because I would uh, definitely keep the bar set a little bit low as we go into June. June historically has its challenges, and I'm gonna go over some of those again just here in just a couple minutes. Uh, but the Dow did finish up 65 points on Friday. The S&P was up three, NASDAQ up 12, mid caps up one and a half. And as I mentioned, the small caps 
down about four points there. So overall, I think the market still looks fine. We continue to consolidate. No big breakouts on Friday. And when we look at the um, sectors, you can see for the most part, they're consolidating as well. Communication services trying to make a breakout, couldn't quite make it. That was the worst performing group on, uh, on Friday. It was only down one third of 1% though. So not a huge move lower. Discretionary stocks trying to get back up through the 50 day moving average, trying to get back up above 174, 175, which was prior support. Couldn't do either one of them. So it looks to me like maybe we topped in the near term on discretionary. Um, the more uh, um, positive sectors from Friday, the real estate, utilities, and healthcare areas, the only one really in breakout mode is real estate. Utilities bounced a little bit off the 50 day or right around the 50 day moving average. <clears throat> healthcare continuing to bounce off of its 20 day, but you can see negative divergence here in play, higher prices, lower PPO. So it just seems like the market is you know, stuck uh, here in the near term. And if we don't get the breakout the early part of June, um, things get a little tougher for uh, the bulls throughout the month of June. It's really the beginning of the month and the end of the month historically where we tend to see bullish action. So we're gonna have an opportunity opening up June uh, here on Tuesday. But after that, you know, once we get through this first week, if we're not able to really get a breakout and I don't believe we're going to, then I think we're gonna probably have more consolidation ahead and probably a little frustrating action as, market, as the market rotates uh, as it has been doing during the current consolidation period. All right, let's move on and take a look at the 10-year Treasury yield. On Tuesday, we do have three economic reports due out, two of them manufacturing. We've got the May PMI manufacturing index due out. 61.5 is the estimate. April was 60.5. So we're looking for a little pickup in activity there. The May ISM manufacturing, also looking for a little bit of pickup, but not as much. April was 60.7. We're looking for that to jump to 60.9. And then uh, finally, April construction spending. This is an old report. Here we are going into June talking about April construction spending. But uh, that is expected to rise six-tenths of 1%. March saw an increase of two-tenths of 1%. Looking at the 10-year Treasury yield, and I mean, I sound like a broken record. Been talking about this now for the last couple of months. But literally, it's just sideways consolidation. 150 to the downside, 175 to the upside. As we start to move into June, we may begin to see folks selling treasuries, meaning the yield moves higher. And the reason for that is we're going to have two big inflation reports out. One, the CPI coming out on June 10th, and the other, the PPI coming out on June 15th. And normally, if those reports are hot, I expect them to be hot. Um, that could lead to selling in treasuries. And I think it could be a sell on the rumor. So I, I wouldn't be surprised to see the yield uh, begin to move higher as we move toward those inflation reports the middle part of June. All right, let's move on to talking technically. All right, so in talking technically today, what I wanna do is go over a little bit of seasonality here. Um, this is the NASDAQ 100, the NDX. Um, and if you're wondering how you get to seasonality, here on this drop down menu, you can go down and just click on the seasonality and then just type in. So here I typed in NDX. So that brings me just the NDX. And I, the last five years is the default. I can drag this back to 20 years and I can see how the NDX has performed in each of these months. So it gives me the percentage. This is, for instance, June. The NDX has gone up 47% of June's going back the last 20 years, 79% uh, in July. So you can see the NASDAQ tends to do much better in July. Now, another way I like to do this is compare the NASDAQ 100 to the S&P 500 to see whether or not we should expect outperformance or underperformance. And if we drag this back over the last 20 years, if you notice, June is... Uh, it averages, the NDX averages underperforming the S&P 500 by three-tenths of 1% over these past two decades. And the NASDAQ 100 has only outperformed the S&P 500 37% of June's. 
So we've been struggling. The NASDAQ 100 has been struggling relative to the S&P 500 for the past few months. And this tells me that we probably should not expect the NASDAQ to outperform in June. I mean, it's not, not a guarantee. 37% of the time we have outperformed in June. So uh, it certainly does happen. It's just telling us that the odds are uh, more likely that the S&P 500 will outperform the NASDAQ 100. Now, if we look at this over the last 20 years, one thing that I, I like to do is to see how areas of the market or how stocks perform in the first, second, and third months of calendar quarters, um, with the first month of a calendar quarter being January, April, July, and October. And the reason I, I look at this is that the first uh, month is when earnings season begins to kick in. So you get the pre-earnings run up and then earnings start to come out in that first month. And so I think it's pretty important to see how different areas of the market react during that time of the, of the calendar quarter. Now, when you go through and you add up January, April, um, July, and October, you'll see that in the first month of calendar quarters, the NASDAQ 100 actually outperforms the S&P 500 by 3.6%. So if you add up 0 0.7, 0 0.1, 1.2, and 1.6, you add those together and you'll get 3.6%. So that is the outperformance. That doesn't mean the NASDAQ 100 goes up 3.6%. It means it outperforms the S&P 500 by 3.6%. The other thing that's interesting is look at the odds of the NASDAQ 100 outperforming the S&P 500 during the first month of each calendar quarter. January, 65%, April, 60%. July 74, October 74. So you can see that the first month of a calendar quarter, we tend to see some really strong relative performance in the NASDAQ 100. When you move to the second month, you can begin to see things dropping off a little bit. And if you add, add up the average outperformance of February, May, August, and November, that 3.6% that we see in the first month drops to 1.8% in the second month. And if you add up the third month, March, June, which we're getting ready to head into, September and December, it's flat. So 3.6 percentage points of outperformance in the first month of a calendar quarter, 1.8% outperformance in the second month of a calendar quarter, and completely flat in the third month of a calendar quarter. And here we go into the third month of the second calendar quarter. So June, uh, historically, we have to be a little careful going in. Now, the other thing you can do is just say, okay, well, this the last 20 years includes both a secular bull market, which we saw, which really, I mean, we've had good action since 2000, middle of, or early 2009. But um, the, the true bull market only started here really in the last eight years, 2013. That's when we took out the 2007 and 2000 highs on the S&P 500. But you can shorten this and just look at the last 11 years. If you'd look at the last 11 years, that or actually 12 years, that'll take you 2010 to 2021. So these have been the bullish years coming out of the bear market that ended in 2009. And if you add this across, it's still pretty strong in favor of the NASDAQ 100 versus the S&P. And look at these percentages, January, April, July, and October, all above 64%, at least 64%. You can see July is the highest at 82%. And that's telling us, again, NASDAQ outperforms the S&P 500 82% of the time in July. Now, if you go to the third month of each calendar quarter, March 50%, June 36%, September 55%, and December 45%, you need to know that the third calendar month of, uh, or the third month of each calendar quarter, you need to understand that the NASDAQ, that growth stocks tend to take a back seat. They don't do as well relative, uh, in this case, NASDAQ relative to the S&P 500 or, or growth relative to the um, value stocks. They're all similar. This upcoming month, we have to be a little bit more careful. The market tends to be cautious in this month. And a lot of it, I think, just has to do with the fact that we're not seeing earnings reports. There are very few earnings reports that come out during June. 
Very few come out during March, September, December. And so the market has left the trade off of something else. And a lot of times you, you're always thinking about the what's going wrong. And so there's so much fear that tends to uh, grip the market in those months. In fact, I haven't looked at it, but I would imagine that the VIX probably tends to do better during the third month. Let's see uh, how the VIX does here going back. Um, well, June, look at that, June and December, the two highest months for the VIX. So those tend to be weak months. That's when the VIX would rise. If the S&P is going down or if the market's struggling and defensive groups are leading, that's when you would typically see the VIX going higher. And that's proven right here. Last 20 years, the VIX has gone up two thirds of, the, of June's, two thirds of December's. Um, pretty interesting. All right, uh, let's move on. And I wanna move on to June seasonality. So let's continue a little bit on what we're already looking at. And I wanna pull up the, na or the uh, uh, technology group. So here's technology going back the last five years. Now we can go back 20 years. And I just want you to look at that June. Technology only goes up 37% of June's. Every other month is at least 50%. And when you look at the returns, average returns, June is the worst average return for technology stocks. So I wrote an article uh, over the weekend, at, you know, just kind of asking the question um, is, you know, have we reached the end for technology? And no, I don't believe we've reached the end. I think technology will be just fine. But we had a huge run up, not only on an absolute basis, but on a relative basis. And so now technology is taking a backseat based on history. I would say we probably should expect that to continue, at least during the month of June. Now, July, things start to pick back up again. Why? Earnings season. So we normally will start to see the more aggressive areas do better as we start moving into earnings season. So I just think we've gotta be careful uh, throughout June and then we'll see what happens. So just be a little bit more cautious, not a, you know, not a, a horrible thing, maybe to have a little bit more cash on hand, maybe uh, shift some of your investments to more defensive areas of the market, they tend to do better. So let me show you healthcare, for instance, which is more of a defensive area. And if we pull up healthcare, uh, you'll see that June, now it only goes up 47% of the time and it only averages 0.3%, but that's the absolute, that's actually not bad when you compare it to the S&P 500 over the same period. So if we go back 20 years, all of a sudden, the relative performance of healthcare, it outperforms the S&P 500 roughly three quarters of June's this decade, which would be you know 15 out of 20 years. I think that 74% is 14 out of 19 years. So we still have to wait and see what happens in June, 2021. But this is telling us that healthcare is an area of the market that we should uh, maybe be thinking about during June. Now, when we think about what areas of healthcare, well, let's pull them up and see. Um, I think you wanna consider medical equipment. When this is a uh, relative to the S&P 500, we go back the last 20 years, you can see June, July, 10, we tend to see some nice outperformance the next couple of months here. Um, let's see, medical supplies, same thing. Let's drag it over and look at June, 0 0.9. And looking on a relative basis, it tends to be one of the stronger months of the year. January strong, September strong, and June, two of the three uh, or two of the, yeah, two of the three best months for healthcare are those third months within the calendar quarter, June and September. Uh, again, that's medical supplies. Uh, then we can look at the pharmas. Pharmas tend to be very defensive. And going back the last 20 years, look at June sticking out here. Pharmas tend to be better on a relative basis, June and December are the two best months for pharmas. And then the other group I wanted to mention was um, healthcare providers. And if we go back 20 years here, you can see June relative outperformance, 1%. May, June tends to be really good for these healthcare providers. Now, I mentioned that the technology area is not so good. So what should we be careful of? Well, 
Uh, first thing I'd be careful of is computer hardware. If you look back, look at June, only going up 32% of the time relative to the S&P. So computer hardware and it underperforms by about four tenths of 1% on average. Another area, semiconductors. I know semiconductors have been hot. Don't be surprised if we see some selling. Look at the relative weakness in June. Nothing is even close. Minus 1.8%. Semiconductors tend to underperform the S&P 500 by almost 2% on average during the month of June. And it only uh, beaten the S&P 37% of June's. So semiconductors is an area you want to be a little careful with this month as well. Um, and I think that'll set up for, for a nice run in July. But, um, you know, actually looking at the history, June, July, August, September, these four months really don't, aren't very good for semiconductors. And then we start to pick it up again as we go into the fourth quarter. So maybe that relative, uh, that history, relative history holds true again. We'll see. All right, chart lists. I wanted to mention with chart lists, just kind of keeping with this theme, I wanted to just show you chart list. Here's the S&P 500. So you can go in to um, your dashboard. Let me uh, go back on one of these other screens. If you go into your dashboard, it's really easy to download the, um, and by the way, uh, stock charts, has added on number of chart lists that you can now have. I have a pro account, which was 350. That was the max number of chart lists. It has now gone up to 500, as you can see there. And instead of maxing out at 500 uh, charts within a chart list, it now goes up to 1,000. You can put 1,000 charts in a chart list. So when you go in and you want to run a scan, if you just hit this new scan, and uh, let's say, uh, get rid of all this. Let's just say you want to you pull in the S&P 500. You can go down here under indices, click S&P 500, add. And when you run this scan, uh, run scan, it will bring up your 500 stocks in the S&P 500. And then you can simply uh, replace an existing list or store them in a new chart list. Very simple. And what I really like about this and worth mentioning is that now, because we can store more than 500 in a chart list, you can get the small cap 600. Before, they wouldn't all fit because you could only get 500. Now, I can add this, run the scan, and I can pick the, I can now take these 600 stocks and I can store them into a new chart list without having to put 500 in one and 100 in another. So that is a, um, a nice feature that's been added at uh, stock charts. So I wanted to make sure that you are aware of that. But once you have that, I'm gonna go back over here now. Once you have, this is the S&P 500, all the component stocks, you can then um, sort this by industry and then sector. And I can scroll down here, find healthcare and find say healthcare providers. And I can go over here, this little snowflake is the seasonality chart. So all of these, I could go through one at a time and find perhaps a healthcare provider that has a very strong track record, maybe in June or maybe May through July, you know, this period that we're in right now. So I'll just randomly pull one out, United Healthcare. Most folks know United Healthcare. Let's see what, what this stock does. Last 20 years, I mean, June's okay, 0.3%. May, 2.7% average, it goes up 80% of the time. And if we pull up stock, let's see what it just did in May, it went up. So it had closed about 398, it looks like, and it just finished at 412. So it was telling us that May is a pretty good month for the stock and it just outperformed the S&P 500 during May. So that's one way to use the chart list combined with seasonality to go into, uh, to find some of those stocks that maybe individual stocks that could provide really nice returns. And that's one of the things we do, by the way, for our members at Earnings Beats. Uh, we have a monthly seasonality report. So I will provide uh, 20 of the best names for each month at the beginning of the month. I'll be working on that later tonight and into tomorrow, trying to get that out to members. Um, but that's part of our 
service. So again, for those of you who are new to Earnings Beats, go on over to earningsbeats.com. We've got this spring special going. Check it out. Try us. Try us. It's There's no cost. See what you think. We've got a tremendous uh, research platform, great education. Uh, I think the best market guidance out there. And uh, you, again, you can give us a shot for uh, 30 days. And if you like our service in the first two weeks, make sure you check this out. The spring special is going to go until June 15th. All right, let's move on to earnings. We've got some big earnings reports coming out this week. Uh, one that I'm very, very interested in is Zoom. Um, Zoom Video Communications. They report on Tuesday after the bell. Um, I'm a little nervous about this report. I like the fact that we've moved up and gotten back above moving averages, but we haven't taken out all of these prior highs around 350, 360. So that bothers me. Also, there really hasn't been a whole lot of volume coming into the stock. And if I scroll down here, look at the relative strength of Zoom versus its uh, computer services peers down near 52 week low. So I'm a little nervous about what might come out this quarter. I still really like this company long term. I just don't know if it's quite ready. Maybe, maybe one more move down, possibly with the earnings that come out on Tuesday. We'll see. Um, another company reporting on Tuesday after the bell is um, Digital Turbine, APPS. This is another one that's a little similar, although recently it was at a 52 week high. And since hitting this high, I guess you could say we're consolidating, although moving down below these lows may be a little nervous. We have come back up, but volume trends are not that great. And as I just showed you throughout the seasonality presentation, you gotta be a little careful with technology stocks um, in the month of June. So all of this just makes me a little nervous. I, these are stocks, you know, I like Zoom, I like Digital Turbine, but I just wonder if maybe we're gonna have an opportunity to get them a little bit cheaper before they make their next run. A Couple other companies reporting on Wednesday, Network Appliance will report. Now, Network Appliance, look at the relative strength versus computer hardware. I said computer hardware, not great in the month of June, but if you're going to invest, I would be investing in leaders and Network Appliance has been a leader although you never quite know what's going to happen with earnings. But I really like what's happened since the vaccine news came out here. That's where we gapped up on network appliance, breaking out above prior highs. And we've been moving for the most part up ever since. I think network appliance looks pretty good. Um, I think we'll go ahead and we'll talk more about earnings reports as we get further into the week. Let me go ahead and wrap up with uh, the three you must see. So I'm gonna start off first with the IBB. So this is iShares, NASDAQ, biotech ETF. When I talked about healthcare, I didn't mention biotech because biotech doesn't typically do very well in June. It does great in July. Look at that false breakout from Friday. Makes me a little nervous. I think we're in this little trading range, 149 to about 153 and a half. Let's see which way breaks first. Next up, Tilray. I do not like this candle from Friday, it looked like we were going to try and break out over the 50, and then we came back down inverted hammer. That, to me, suggests a little bit more weakness in the near term. Be careful there. And along the lines of the biotechs not doing well in June, I don't like this false breakout on CRSP, CRISPR Therapeutics. Uh, I would say, based on this, I would expect maybe short-term weakness here. Appreciate everybody tuning in. I uh, want to wish you a great week, great month as we kick off June. I uh, do be a little bit more cautious, as I mentioned throughout the show. I think June is a month where we should set the bar a little bit low. Have a great Tuesday. I'll be back on Wednesday over at Earnings Beats for your next Trading Places Live. Have a great day, everybody. Happy trading. Hey, guys. Dave Keller here with StockCharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, and we hope you did, hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.